I was born in 1960, so I grew up during the Apollo space race. My grandfather, Grandpa Carl, had a real interest in inventing and tinkering, and he had this old shortwave radio. And whenever we visited, we'd tune around and listen to Ship to Shore, Morse code, and I fell in love with radio at the age of five. When I was 13, I broke my leg in three places, and I was in a body cast in the hospital for seven and a half months. I couldn't do anything but lay there. And my grandmother gave me the shortwave radio, and I listened around and uh, learned about antennas and radio, and, and that really inspired me to a career in engineering. My family was very poor. Luckily, I got an Indiana scholarship, and I hitchhiked to Purdue University. There at Purdue as a student, I was really captivated by the future of cellular telephone. Studied electrical engineering, met Brenda there, and I studied uh, for master's and PhD when I graduated with my PhD in 1987. I knew there would be this huge need for engineers, so I set out to try to create a fundamental research program at Virginia Tech. I had the support of tremendous number of people in the wireless industry, many who are in the Wireless Hall of Fame. In fact, Raj Singh gave me my first research contract in 1988 when the U.S. was trying to figure out what the digital communication mode should be. That kind of launched my career at Virginia Tech and then we began studying CDMA, the future of wireless. A lot of our work at Virginia Tech, my students who worked so hard, uh, created great knowledge which was used for the first U.S. digital cellular standards, both CDMA and TDMA. In the late 1980s, it was really a green field. It was very raw, very nascent. No one knew what was going to happen, and even companies were not able to do the research needed to keep up with what would eventually be the demand. Of course, global standards at that point really weren't developed, so it was really the wild, wild west for wireless. I worked with the IEEE to try to bring wireless into the mainstream of its publications because there were no journals focused on wireless communications. As a professor, one of the exciting things I do is try to bring the research that we're doing 5, 10, 15 years into the future and make it usable, make it real for industry. For example, 5G, no one really in the world believed millimeter waves would work. But I was fortunate enough to have been working in millimeter waves since the 1990s. My days at Virginia Tech and then at UT Austin, I always believed wireless would need more bandwidth and knew that millimeter waves would work, but the semiconductor technology wasn't ready. And coming to NYU was really terrific for the industry. We were able to use the streets of Manhattan to show that millimeter wave could go around corners, could provide capacity, order a magnitude greater than we ha ever had in cellular. In late 2014, I discovered I had acute myeloid leukemia, underwent a stem cell transplant. But during that time, I worked so hard with my students over the phone since I was in quarantine for a year and wrote a number of the papers and we processed the data which the industry used for 5G. But something great happened from that experience. The doctors at Sloan Kettering, particularly Dr. Sergio Giroald, who saved my life and did my stem cell transplant, he listened to me when I refused the x-ray for my exit. I had a theory that immunocompromised patients, if exposed to ionizing radiation, might be more susceptible to second cancers or to uh, damage. Uh, since ionizing radiation is known to be dangerous. Dr. Giralt listened to the theory and we kicked off the world's first study, retrospective study, of leukemia patients post-transplant and how much exposure they have to ionizing radiation. And we found that overall survivability is markedly improved over seven years. So just like the broken leg when I was 13, and I'm just grateful and fortunate that some good comes out of it. My role as a professor is to try to bring things that are very much in the future and show that it's viable and produce the students who can then implement it at the companies. The magic of wireless signals being able to reach you invisibly since I was five has really driven me and has just been so amazing to me. It's really a miracle. You know, we look up in the sky and we see stars and those radio waves, the light waves, are traveling millions and billions of years. It's just incredible. It really is magic.